Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My brother, the question is asking about this narration here from Umar ibn Khattab radhi an. This has been reported by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih Mu'annaqan, but it's also been reported by Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf and others. And Hafiz uh, ibn Hajar rahimahullah said that this narration is Sahih. He says, Inni la ujahij jayshi, surely I prepare my army one of his salah whilst I am praying. I prepare my army whilst I am praying. So in my salah I'm thinking, how I'm going to attack, where I'm going to place, who, what tactics I'm going to use. He's thinking about all of this. In how is he having this in his salah? How is he thinking about this in the salah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded for us to establish khushu in the salah? Qadaflan mu'minun, alladheenu fi salatihim, khashi'un, successful other believers, those who have khushu in their salah. Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, sallu kama ra'aytu mu'ni wa salli. And the ulama from the madhahib have said, irrespective of how you pray, which madhahib you follow, what opinion in ijtihad that you have, all of them, all of them have said khushu is one of the integral parts of the salah and he has told us to pray like him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you will find several narrations talking about the importance of khushu and the importance of khushu is actually even highlighted by Ibn Qayyim and we can see now the importance of this question. He says, rahimahullah, that khushu in acts of worship is the difference between the believer and the kafir and the munafiq. And the reason why is because when the believer establishes the act of worship, he does this because he has an element of iman and khushu, whereas the kafir has no khushu whatsoever. The munafiq has external show of obedience, but there is no khushu internal. So now we can see why this question is important, because it's connected to iman. And when a person has khushu, this is a sign of his iman. So what is khushu? Khushu is to show humility and submissiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala internally and externally based on ilm. So this can then be seen on his a'mal, on his actions. This is the definition. What's the ruling on khushu? Now the ulama have said, yes, it is heavily, heavily, heavily emphasized, but it is not from the arkan and it's not from the wajibat. So it is something which is heavily endorsed and recommended. If a person doesn't have khushu, then the salah is sahih and there is no repeating and there is no sujood sahu. Now we get to this narration here then. How is that possible that Umar is thinking about something external to the salah when he's supposed to be thinking about and concentrating on what he is saying and what he is doing? Now it isn't just this narration of Umar. We have examples from the time of the Messenger of Allah So there's one narration where he, uh, the narration goes like this that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in the Salah remembered some of the maintenance that he had for one of his wives and as soon as he made the Taslim he went home and he gave uh, the wife that he owed the maintenance to her maintenance so he's thinking about it in the Salah there's another narration uh, where he had Zakat where he had Zakat due uh, or oh, sorry, given to him that needed to be distributed and he was thinking about it in the salah. So as soon as he made the taslim, he went home and he distributed the zakat. So the companions were wondering well, what's going on here. So he explained to them, I remember there was some zakat that I needed to distribute. Also in the hadith of the eclipse, the khusuf, the messenger of Allah said, I saw Jannah and I stepped towards it and I saw the fire and I took steps back and in Jannah I saw a, a grape which was the size of a head of, of an elephant and I went to grab it. And then the shaitan passed by and he said, I grabbed him until I could feel the wetness of his tongue on my, on my hand. So all of this is happening in the salah. So now, how then do we reconcile? It's not just this narration of Umrah then, is it? Because we've got other narrations uh, from the Messenger of Allah where they are thinking about things which are external or visibly external from the salah inside of the salat. So now this is the mas'ala. The mas'ala isn't necessarily this statement of Umrah. The mas'ala is... Can we think about things which are not connected to the Salah in the Salat? And the answer to that question with the ulama is yes, but they have looked at it from different viewpoints. The first one here is what Ibn Thaymin actually says. But this has been mentioned by Ibn At-Teen. Ibn At-Teen. He's one of the ulama that you will find in the explanations of Hadith, Sahih Bukhari and others. And what we have in this first possible explanation is that there is a difference between thinking about things which are not beneficial compared to those things which are beneficial. So he says, uh, I don't want to read it all out, but Muthaymin Rahimullah is saying here, 
what is the meaning of this then that he is you know uh, preparing his army and the goal in tajhiz amin al-mu'minin umar bin khattab li jayshi fi salah amr mashru' he says that this is something actually something which is uh, recommended and legislated because he is an authority in himself umar radiyallahu especially fi salat al-khawf which is the salah which is established in front of the enemy and he is thinking about the army and he's thinking about what's going to happen next he's saying that this is an act of worship within an act of worship but this is different to a person thinking about and he's thinking about things which are completely external this is a big difference so now the second one, which is where you're thinking about things which are not beneficial, which are not connected to the Salah, which are not connected to the obedience of Allah, all of that defines khushu'. Whereas if you're thinking about an act of obedience within your Salah, or an act of obedience within the act of obedience, then this is part of khushu', as we mentioned earlier, especially when it comes to definitions. And this has been mentioned by Ibn Teen, rahimahullah. He says, if a person is thinking about something which is beneficial but it doesn't distract him from the salah so he knows what he is doing whilst he is standing in ruku and sujood then there is no harm in this at all so that's the first possible explanation Sex, the second possible explanation is that it is possible for a person to do both think about something which is beneficial but also think about the salat and this has been mentioned by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah and he gave some of the examples that we mentioned earlier of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he added another one which I didn't mention earlier is that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was thinking about the child that was crying and he wanted to make the Salah longer so it's possible for you to think about that as well as saying Subhanahu Rabbi Al-A'la and have your mind on something else at the same time uh, A third explanation and this is similar to what Ibn Thaymeen actually is saying here is that he is offering the salat whilst thinking of the betterment of those behind him. Especially as Ibn Taymiyyah is saying here, if it was salat al khawf But even if it wasn't salat al khawf if he's thinking about the betterment for his people, his community, the ummah, then this is included in a person having khushu. So these are possible explanations. I think the best way of us understanding this is that if a person is not being distracted from the salah but they are thinking about other things which are beneficial then this is allowed however there is a big however here some of the ulama have mentioned from the talbis of iblis upon the talib al-ilm is that he is distracted in his salah by things that he has studied but he's not thinking about the salah at all so he's in the Fatiha and he's reciting, he's making Ruku, he's making Sujood and he thinks, okay, I'm not focusing on the Salah but I'm thinking about something else but that's also beneficial but he's being distracted from the Salah this is from the Talbis of Iblis upon the person this is from the deceptions of the Shaitan upon the person so what we're saying here is if the person has Khushu on the Salah that is the origin, that is what is required and that is what is best it is permissible for a person to combine two things that he has focused on in the salah on the condition that number one that thing is beneficial and number two it doesn't distract him from focusing on the salat and this kind of i think reconciles all the different opinions and the ways of looking at it and i think it's a, it's a good way of summarizing it as well we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who establish the salah in a manner that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with with us هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله على محمد